Okay, another episode of Unity and PD. So today, um, <laughs> today, I keep saying today. In this episode, I'm going to show how to send like a float value um, to PD from Unity. So once again, I'm going to be using uh, my Unity PD Basics project. So give that a download and have a look at it and follow along. Um, I have a prefab in here that's called proximity. So it's all pre-done for you. So I'll show how it works and then um, explain a little bit how it works and then you can kind of tear it apart however you like. So I'm just using the blank scene here. If I take my prefab called proximity and pop it in here, it makes a blue circle with a little red dot in the middle of it. Um, so let's have a play of this and see what it does. Got to find it. There it is. There we go. Okay. So it's pretty clear what that's doing. I think as you get, when you enter the blue circle, it starts making sound. And as you get closer to the red dot, the pitch and the volume both go up. There we go. Okay, so how is that actually working now? Let's have a look. So my proximity prefab is made up of two things, sensor bounds and sphere. Uh, so the sphere is this thing in the middle, and that's actually where I've got my audio source and my libpd instance. I also have a script in there called proximity to float. Okay, my proximity to float has three things. It has, it's communicating with a PD patch, which is the one in sphere. So it's just itself in this case. Target location, which is again, itself, the, 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 the spot in the middle. And sensor bounds, which is my other object, which is this cylinder. Okay, so now let's have a look at what the script is actually doing. So what this script is doing, uh, there's our three things that it's looking for. So what it's doing is it's taking the distance, the vector distance from the camera to the thing in the middle, right? Uh, that, that object in the middle, the, uh, what did I call it? The target location. So that target location and the distance between where you are as the camera is being calculated and it's giving us a number. It's giving us a number from zero to one. That's what these calculations are doing. Then it's sending it out to a PD patch with the name proximity as a float. Okay, cool. Now the two things to note here, well, that's the first thing to note. And the second thing to note is that this is in relation to, this is the, this calculation is dependent on the size of this. So if I want to just make it bigger, um, I can just click on my sensor bounds and make my X and Z bounds larger. So it has to be a circle by because of the way it's being calculated. So I have to, the X and Z have to be equal. Um, but if I now press play, then my calculation will start from a much wider space. There it is. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look at the PD patch we're using, uh, which is called proximity. Close my other one. Here we go. So proximity. So this is the float value. So I've got an object called receive proximity because I'm sending out a float number called proximity. And as I bring this up, you can hear it's acting in the same way that it would in the PD patch. Now I'm using random values to generate my synth. So It'll sound a little bit different each time you launch it, but that's what's fun. Okay, and that's that's how that patch is working. Now, uh, when I put it into Unity, it takes my location and sends it into Unity. Now I can have multiple instances of this in the same way that I could pre previously. So I can have, I can just keep dragging a bunch of these proximity on, and each one of these will run its own PD patch, right? So now I'll have five separate PD patches all running independently of each other, but playing at the same time. So, so I've, 
I spawned in one of those circles, so you can hear me. But if, as soon as I drop, as I go into the little overlap zone in between them, you'll start hearing two synths being played. So you could set those values to be to be controlling anything you like, right? You can have a sound the pitch of a of an actual sound being played, or it can be um, the volume of something can go up, or you know you can set the intensity of some kind of sound based on how close you are to the object. So this is a very useful thing from a sound design for games standpoint um, to be able to get actual numbers out from Unity and sent into your patch. So you can always use my prefab, just drag it in and just change your PD patch that you're using down here. Um, the important thing is that when you've made this PD patch and you've got this proximity to float script going in it, make sure you have a receive object that matches the name in your script. So I'm in my case, it's proximity. Make sure that you have that receive proximity object in your PD patch, and you can be doing something with it in there if you like. Um, yeah, once you've done all that and you've got stuff set up, you don't need to have these meshes. Similar to in what I was doing with the ambient thing, for example, you can turn off the mesh renderers of all of these things. You don't need uh, to have these mesh renders in there, for example, you can have, I mean, you could do it for all of these. We can just turn off the um, mesh renders for all of this stuff. And that way it's just there for our own benefit when we want to see it. But otherwise it's invisible and the sound is the thing that's giving us the feedback of where we are. So all the sound will still work. I have no idea where I am, but as I move around, <laughs> I have no concept. So basically, all I'm trying to say is that the um, visuals that are there are totally uh, they're placeholders and not important at all to, in terms of the site making of the music. So I would always and the making of sound. So I would always encourage you to turn off just use these as shapes and turn off the shapes if if you think that is better for you or more useful for your um for your game okay that is sending proximity data as a float over to pd and using it to make sound okay